Well, good morning, church. How's everybody doing this morning? You excited to be here? That was a little weak. I heard these young people over here. Let's try it again. You got guys excited to be here this morning? Uh, how many of you, just real quick, how many of you came uh, Friday night to uh, the drama? Okay. Keep your hand up, Friday nights. How many of you came Saturday night? Uh, okay. Put your hands down. How many of you came both nights? Yeah. All right, that's pretty good. How many of you haven't seen it at all and you're excited to be here this morning? Oh, yeah, look at that. All right. Look, we had such a great turnout. I think first night we had like seven people who raised their hand in, in response to what Pastor had put out last night. We had a few that raised their hands. But the most important thing I thought uh, just seeing these two plays, or the, well, the same play, but past two days, is uh, it's good to be reminded that Jesus is still on his throne, you know? And I, I was so thankful that I got that reminder uh, through these two nights that no matter my situation, my circumstances, no matter what I'm going through, even through loss, he is still good, amen? So uh, we, we had such a great turnout and the cast has worked so hard, we said, we're gonna do it one more time. Uh, I, I agree, Pastor, you said it last night. I, You've seen it twice, and you can't wait to see it again this morning because you get something different out of it. And there's uh, surprises in it that maybe some of you haven't seen it yet. You'll be surprised when you see uh, some of these people perform and sing because uh, I know uh, a lot of people, we've had a lot of comments about what uh, people, the talent that we, we even have here. So uh, just a few announcements this morning as we get started. Um, Back there on the booth, if you are a member or not a member, and uh, you've been coming here for some time, uh, we're, we're not a very good church that thinks about membership. We just call you family when you get here. Uh, we've, we've always been that way. Uh, the only thing we deal with with members is you can't vote. So, uh, But other than that, you are family. So if you've been coming here for some, uh, some time now, uh, we want to update your contact information. Uh, so if you're new or you're a current member or somebody that's just coming here, we want to get your email address because we communicate a lot through our emails. Uh, Pastor sends out an email about... Uh, well, he does every Sunday, and then he'll throw a couple of emails there uh, throughout the week and just kind of keeping us updated. So we want to make sure that we have your updated information. Back there at our connection booth, which is if you go out now, it's right there on the right. There's a uh, just a paper there. If you'll just put your email, your name, and the information there, that would be great. Also, uh, in the coffee shop, how many of you know we got a coffee shop? Uh, we have a legit coffee shop. Like we don't just make uh, regular coffee. They they have all the fancy stuff that I can't even say. You get two squirts of this and that. Uh, but they, it's really good. They they have an awesome coffee shop. It's a great opportunity for you to uh, support different uh, ministries. But that we have that open every Sunday. Uh, about 10 o'clock, uh, sometimes a little bit earlier, so you can go and enjoy that. But there is a, a piece of machinery back there that keeps getting shut off. Uh, so please don't shut that uh, thing off because it takes forever for it to warm up. Uh, so it can stay on all the time. So if you have shut it off because you're like, oh, they left this on, just leave it on. We're, we're perfectly fine leaving that thing on. But we want you to be a part of that. Uh, also and come and get coffee that's why we created the foyer the way it is so you could fellowship and come together and just uh, drink coffee and spend some time um, the other thing is is our food giveaway so this coming up Wednesday uh, we know this is our busy season this coming up Wednesday uh, we're going to be packing our food uh, for our food uh, drive where we're going to be giving it to families and it's going to be on Thursday that we give it out from six to eight uh, I think I've gave, Pastor, you counted this morning about 50 tickets you said we've, we've given out. Uh, so if you know a family that needs food, please, please grab a ticket and take it to them. We wanted to do about 75 to 100 boxes. And uh, uh, Pastor even made the comment last night, it's hard to give food away. Uh, but this is a great opportunity for our church to be able to minister to our community. So if you know somebody, if you need food, 
uh, we, we don't, we're not going to keep you from getting it. We want you to be able to use that as much as possible. But if you know somebody, a neighbor, a friend, a coworker, a family member who needs food, um, please, please grab a ticket and you can take it to them and they'll just show up uh, on Thursday, bring that ticket from 6 to 8 o'clock and then we'll put that food in their car and they can uh, have it for them. Uh, so we'll be giving those out at the end of service. So if you'll see me at the end of service in the back, I'll make sure that you get a ticket. And the last announcement I have, uh, say amen. amen. Don't say amen to that. No. Uh, the last announcement I have is uh, our youth uh, Christmas party uh, is this Friday coming up. So it's going to be in our youth building. So youth, I know we haven't had youth in like, Forever, it feels like somebody, one of our youth even said it last night, I feel like we haven't been together in forever because we've been busy on Wednesday. Friday, we're going to be here, um, so please come and be a part of that as well. Amen? Yeah. You mean I'm going to pass this over to Pastor. Oh, Bill, I'm sorry. Hey, Bill, could, could you come up here? And the reason I say that because nobody else will be able to hear you except people in here if you don't use this. Uh, announcement, an announcement to men and women uh, in your church uh, calendar. It says that next Wednesday evening there will be no church services, but that's the third Wednesday evening, and you know, that's when we have men and women's ministry. And Dottie and I have been talking. We'd like to go ahead and have uh, a Wednesday evening ministry um, uh, time, and it'll be same time, six thirty, but we'll be in the youth building, and uh, it's going to be basically a time of fellowship and finger foods. And um, uh, we want to invite the whole church, even if you typically do not come. Please feel free to come. And if you're visiting, we'd love to have you. be a good chance to meet new people. Uh, the third Wednesday, is that? So not this coming Wednesday. Is that not this coming Wednesday? We're doing, we're packing the food this coming Oh, that's right. Okay. Remind me. I taught phys ed, not math. All right. We're all reading. That's the 21st, yes, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, the 21st. But come Wednesday night, because we're pa packing uh, f food, yes, I yeah. okay. But, <clears throat> and, but, pardon? We got something going on the next two Wednesdays. <clears throat> but um, the, the Dottie, you, ladies are making finger foods, right? Yeah. Okay, so the ladies will be making finger foods. Men, you don't have to make finger foods. I'm not sure I'd want to eat it anyway. But we're just going to take money out of the men's uh, account and just buy some food items to go around the finger foods and stuff. And, Dottie, it is you there, right? <clears throat> you still going to have the um, ornament game? Okay. Now, I don't really know what to do about that because I'm not, I mean, a lot of men, we're not really into ornaments, so I'm just leaving us out of it, you know. But, but I'm sorry? Yes, I'm sorry. The men and women are both meeting together just for fellowship and finger foods. I know, wow. We'll be in the youth building, so everybody's invited, and that is the 21st. Got it? Everybody got it? All right. I know it's a busy time of year and sometimes getting everything all worked out and uh, everything on the schedule together is uh, a little challenge, but we appreciate your patience. And as I said last week, I'm glad I'm, I attend a church that's got things going on and uh, that, that we're busy. So thank you for remembering that. So this afternoon at 2 p.m., seniors say that would be 2 p.m., all right, we are uh, taking the seniors, we're leaving, and we're going to go have a meal together, and then we're going to go down towards Charlotte to the Speedway, and George and I are going to challenge one another on the Speedway tonight. Uh, and actually, uh, or he's already laid out the challenge, but see, I, 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 I'm the one that has to think about liabilities, and I got people on my van, so I don't challenge him too hard. I'm just kidding. But... Uh, uh, but we do have a few spots left, so if you're a senior, 55 and above, and um, 
you didn't sign up or you did and said you can't go, then there are still a few spots left. And so if you'll tell me before you leave today that you'd like to be a part of it, then I'll put your name down. But again, we'll be leaving it too and uh, then going on down to the speedway, see the lights, and just a great time of fellowship. Don't you love fellowship? You know, I, I sit and listening, and I, I looked at Eddie and Eaton, and I, I told Eddie, I, I was just standing there list, listening to you guys' fellowship this morning. It sounded good, right? Just to hear the children of God loving to be together, and I, and I love that so much. So thank you for all of that. So we're going to... Uh, uh, as I've been announcing, let me tell you this. In just a moment, Monty's going to come around and receive our regular tithing offering. And then after the uh, drama is over, then we're going to receive the offering for Sanjeev and Anita uh, to be a blessing to the children of India. So uh, thank you for staying around and being a blessing and uh, planning into that ministry and making a little child's Christmas something special. So thank you for that. So uh, if you this morning are a member of the church, 18 years old and above, uh, I need us to consider ourselves just in a business session. Paul said about uh, membership, 18 years old and above, that as a member you get to vote. Good thing is we don't do much voting. I love it that our church government doesn't bring a lot of voting to the church floor. We just come and love Jesus and serve him, and we uh, trust our council, and so we're grateful for our council as they help lead our church. Uh, but the one, there's a couple of things that we have to bring before the church body, and of course that is one of those is to approve the council members for the upcoming year. So uh, if you don't, I know they gave some ballots out already, but if you're 18 years old and above, a member of the church, you don't have a ballot, would you raise your hand so these guys can give the ballots out? So again, 18 years old and above, and a member of the church. And I will ask you if you are 18 years old and above or under 18 and you got a ballot coming in, just kind of crumple that thing up and put it in your pocket because uh, so we can make sure that we stay uh, with integrity in doing this. Can I borrow yours? I'll put my glasses on. While they are, yeah, keep your hand up. So we have no new council members to bring before you because of the uh, rotation. We, we find ourselves that we have four council members that are eligible for a second two-year term. So if you would remember, council members are elected for a two-year term. They can succeed themselves for a second two-year term. But after that, then you have to go through district get approval. So again, all of these, that is Dave Miner, Dave, you know Santa Claus here, stand up, Dottie Allen, uh, Monty Monteith, and Grant Shiplett are our four council members that uh, uh, we're pre presenting back to the church. Again, the uh, church council serves as the uh, nominating committee, and we ask you to ratify them. So again, to remind you about ratification, you do not have to ratify them as a group. Uh, you ratify them one per person. So uh, if you choose all four of them, then again, uh, check all four. Uh, but if uh, you, you see one you don't want to ratify, then you don't have to check their name. But I, these are good people. They've served us well. And so our existing council that will have one more year left on their final term is Scott McKinney, Brandon Henson, Christy Simmons, and Bill Luckadoo. They're in the final year. But again, the four we're asking you to ratify this morning are Dave Miner, Dottie Allen, Monty Monteith, Grant Shiflett, and that will be for their final two-year term. So has everyone got a ballot? So 18 years old and above. So if you go ahead and take care of that for just a moment. And uh, so uh, then uh, they're, they're, t they're taking them up. So um, if you don't have yours taken up, oh, here you go. I'm sorry. I stole your ballot. There you go. But uh, once again, all right. Does anyone need more time or anyone your ballot's not been received yet? Okay. 
Thank you so much for allowing us to to take this time. I appreciate our church council and all that they do. And uh, so would you pray with me for a moment before we go any further? And uh, I'm Monty's going to come around in just a moment and receive this morning's tithe and offering. But as we gather together, as I come in last night, I, I looked around and I thought about everything that had been done, the work that had been put in, and uh, the blessing that this had been. I felt like while everything's set up, some had not got to see it. We need to do this one more time. Because what I want to challenge you as you look through this drama tonight or this morning, look if you have saw it, look for something new. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you in a new way. Because each one of the situations, there's going to be about four or five situations that we will be presented uh, that are facing different people's lives. So will you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you as only He can this morning? So Father, in Jesus' name, we bless you that you bring us together. Lord, we bless you that you touch and change lives. We bless you that you love us with a love that is beyond any description Lord, that we could even begin to think of. Not only do you love us with that love that is beyond anything that we could think of, Lord, you said you would do for us. Lord, exceedingly abundantly above anything that we could ask or think. And Lord, we bless you for the greatness of who you are. And Lord, we thank you again for everyone that has served, whether they are the cast members, whether they're the uh, sound team, the team up here putting things together. I have no idea what they're all called, but Lord, I just thank you for everyone that has taken time to allow themselves to minister, and even to some, that's the first time we saw them, Lord, in ministry in these ways in the church family. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we're seeing giftings come forth. And Lord, there's more giftings. And Lord, I believe that even as we see some of these giftings come forth, that other people will be challenged, Lord, to, to allow their gifting to be used for the kingdom of God. So Lord, we bless you. We praise you for that, and uh, Lord, we ask you to allow healing to flow. We know several that are still struggling with uh, flus and other viruses, but Lord, and some have had COVID, but Father, we just ask you in Jesus' name to allow the healing of the Lord to flow into every body, into every life, into every family, into every situation in Jesus' name. Now, as money comes around, we thank you for your blessing upon the giving in Jesus' name. Amen. Monty. The scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave. So I'm so thankful, especially this time of year, we're reminded how much God gave in his precious son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Who's ready to give to the Lord? Amen. Who's ready to give to the Lord? Would you stand to your feet? As we obey the Lord in bringing in our tithes and offerings, we make the following declaration in faith. According to Malachi 3, the windows of heaven are opening over every area of my life and my blessings will be more than I can contain. The plans of the enemy to bring destruction to any area of my life will be canceled so that I can enjoy the abundance of life that Jesus spoke about in John 10. According to Deuteronomy 28, the blessings of the Lord shall overtake me. I am blessed in the city and in the field. My children are blessed. My vocation and my investments are blessed. I am blessed going out and coming in. The Lord is commanding His blessings in all that I undertake. Every enemy that comes against me shall flee before me seven ways. This is my declaration and my commitment is to take what God blesses me with to bless others and to further the work of God's kingdom. Shout praise and bring your offering, please. Amen. Thank you for your faithfulness and giving. And uh, you guys, as we get ready to close out a, another church here, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness and giving. You're allowing us, and we'll talk more in the coming weeks about the new budget that the council set uh, this past Monday or Tuesday. But you allowed us to bless more people this year because you're faithful to give. 
We're going to be able to bless more missionaries, missionaries in a greater way. We're going to uh, be able to support uh, things that we hadn't been able to because of the faithfulness of your giving. So thank you so much for that. Again, I am so grateful for these that serve us. Thank you for being here. I would ask you now to, to worship along as they sing and to play and hear from the Lord something new this morning in Jesus' name. God bless you, the ornament. Honey, I, oh, no, I did it again, Lord. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Cynthia. It's going. How's it going in your life? Well, it's going okay. I'm calling about Christmas. Do you know when you'll arrive? Well, I spoke to John last night. Mm, how'd that go? Mm, fine, I guess. After two years, we're to the point where we can at least be civil with one another again. Well, that's good, you know, for the sake of the kids. Yeah, I'm learning to accept it. Anyway, how are you coping with things? Does Jake have any new job leads? The Lord will provide. You just have to trust him. I know. I'm just concerned about everyone. The Lord also strengthens us. I, I just have to be faithful. I'm not saying you're not, but listen, Cynthia. I do plan on coming home for Christmas, but the kids won't be with me. <laughs> but isn't this your year to have them? Cynthia, please let me finish. Of course, Sarah, but this is just ridiculous. I mean, he's just trying he to... He is just doing what's fair. It meant a lot to me that John came to Mom's funeral... And he let the kids stay again with me this year for Thanksgiving. We discussed it, and I think it's fair to let him have the kids again this year for Christmas. None of what happened with Mom's death could be helped. Well, if that's what you both decided. It was my idea. John agreed. And I thought since we were all coming home for Christmas, we could spend time together as a family and spend time with Dad. And I don't know, if he wants to go over any business kinds of stuff, we could be there with minimal distractions. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but... I'm glad you're coming. So, when do you think you'll get here? Mm, I don't know if I can get there much earlier than Christmas Eve, but I'll try. Is the prodigal son still planning to arrive? He's next on my call list. <laughs> well, I'll let you go so you can get to that. No telling what's cooking in Nashville these days. No kidding. It's always this close. <laughs> so close. <laughs> okay, but really, I don't understand why Lucas hasn't hit the big time yet either. I mean... He's better than what's out there now. Well, he seems to be running in the right circles. It's just not his time yet, I guess. Well, it is his time to be nudged about coming home for Christmas. Right. So let me get to it. Talk to you later. Love you. Bye. Hello. 
Well, I don't believe it. I didn't get your voicemail. Nope, it's me in the flesh. You're lucky I heard my phone, though. What's up? Well, I'm just calling to see if you're coming home for Christmas. Why do you sound like you're in a tunnel? I'm standing outside of an album release party catching some air. Ooh, whose album? Oh, manufactured Blondes. It's crazy what they can do in post-production these days. They can make the tone deaf sing. The Mousy Browns Blonde. And the public fall in love with mediocre lyrics and substandard talent. Strong words. Strong feelings behind them. But, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be coming home for Christmas, and I'm, I'm bringing someone with me. Oh, Lucas. Do you really think this is the right time to be parading yet another girl in front of us? Mom's not been gone a month yet, and I just think we need to keep it strictly family this year. Be there for Dad. Well, Cynthia, I don't, I don't think you're the one that wrote the book on what's appropriate, but uh, I think you'll like Shasta. Wait, Shasta? That's her name? No, like the soda? No, it's, it's Shasta. Well, so you say. It's a soda pop name. Look, if we're done here, I'll be coming home from Christmas. I'll be coming home Christmas Eve morning. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be flying in with Shasta if you'll pick us up at the airport. Uh, well, of course, but I, I can't just come and... Of course, there's so much more I could be doing if I stayed in Nashville, but I promise I'll make time for Christmas. But Lucas... Look, I've got to get back to this party. I'll email you my itinerary. Uh, don't worry, I'll make time for Christmas. Got to go. Bye. Okay, but... Uh, Lucas...
Honey, oh, I can't. Lord, I did it again. Oh. Knock, knock. Hey, Dad. Hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> hey, Pop. Hey, hey bud. Hey, hey buddy. <laughs> that one for you. What do you got? I was six afraid of seven. Um, because he was ugly and mean. No, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did Tennessee? Huh? What did Tennessee? I don't get it. The same thing, Arkansas. I <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> nice props. You must got smarter than eight-year-olds. Oh, <laughs> never mind, you two. Now let's get to decorating. Oh, send a bell. I drug it out here, but... Your mother was so organized, and I don't know what we used and what we didn't. Oh, Dad, it's not rocket science. She kept everything labeled. Well, look, the candy can I made out of dough. How old were you when you made that? Five, I think. Do you remember how many I made before I made this perfect one? I should, since pretty much all that was on our tree that year was the rejects. <gasps> look, oh, wow, Dad, look, I made this at vacation Bible school. In the olden days, did we be a sick person a little? <laughs> no, we were making ornaments to be shipped off to various mission fields. And I thought the gems were so pretty that I'd make one for Mother. Remember, Dad, I was so scared Mrs. Cobbs was going to take it for me because it was the most beautiful one I'd ever seen. I remember, sweetheart. Your mother loved it. Oh, there's the cross. Your sister made, oh, out of fencing wire. She was so proud to tell me how she'd cut the fence all by herself. Never mind the gaping hole in the backyard that let the dogs escape. <laughs> and, and Lucas, when he was younger, he made this, uh, he made this, uh, what in blue blazes is this thing? Do we have to use this? 
Yes, Charlie, we have to use that. This is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Charlie, apologize right now. For what? Cynthia, he's eight. If it's okay, I'll handle this. Charlie, I suppose to anyone who's not fortunate enough to be a part of our family that this may not seem like the prettiest topper a tree could have. There are certainly prettier ones out there if pretty's all you want. But this one, this one's beautiful. Huh? I don't know of any other ornament that has the history this one has. That's not an ornament. It's an ornament. Uh, it's a tree decoration, isn't it? So, it's an ornament. And like I said, with a history unlike any other. A story that Pirates stole it? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, I know. You killed it during the Revolutionary War. <laughs> no, I didn't. Civil War? <laughs> civil War? How old do you think I am, boy? I'll have you know I spent my Civil War days doing other things. Uh, Dad? I'm sorry, honey. Hey, I left the Civil War when I met your grandmother on the Mayflower. Really? Uh, Dad, please. <laughs> Come over here before your mother gives me a pinch. <laughs> well, Charlie, this topper and, and that box, they hold a lot of our family history. See, shortly after Gran and I got married, we were called to missions work overseas. I hope I'm never called. Don't you have to live in a hut and eat bugs? <laughs> well, I guess it kind of depends on the job, but some missionaries actually live in igloos. Cool. Dad, he believes you, and he goes to school and tells this stuff. Okay, I'm sorry. Charlie, we lived in Ethiopia, and there's a couple things you need to know about Ethiopians and the way they celebrate Christmas. First, they don't celebrate until January 7th, and even then, trees aren't a part of their celebration. Well, we wanted to respect that, but by then, Gran was feeling sad and homesick. It had been a lot to take on. A new marriage, a new husband... A new job in a new country. So I decided I'd do something to find a tree so that we could quietly celebrate our Christmas on December 25th. Just to cheer her up. And it just made matters worse, didn't it? <laughs> Jake, it sounds like you might know a thing or two about being married. And yeah, I only made her sadder. We had this non Christmas tree, Christmas tree, no decorations. Loneliness was the only thing decking our halls. See, we had no internet, no cell phones, no iPads, no FaceTime. Because it was the olden times. Well, <laughs> I guess it kind of was. So, Christmas Eve, there was a knock at the door. It was Dwight, a boy from the village. Incidentally, his name means beloved, just like David's from the Bible. Grant had cared for his, grand his mother, who had been ill, and she made sure that he got to school each day. He was telling us about all the good changes he'd seen in the village since we'd arrived. And he realized that accepting Jesus was very important. He wanted to learn more about this Savior of ours. He'd learned about our tradition of Christmas trees in an old encyclopedia he'd seen at school. And decided to make us this as a thank you for helping him find Christ. This was the only decoration on our little makeshift tree that year. But it was just enough. Just like Jesus. snow on evergreens and cider by the fire presents underneath the tree that spark the children's eyes mistletoe and lights that glow and all those kinds of things
What does this have to do with us? I mean, besides you and Grant. Well, each Christmas Eve since, as a family, we've gathered together and taken time to reflect on what the year has brought us and to thank God for the son that he gave us, as well as his gift of eternal, abundant life that is yet to come. That's one gift that does not change and cannot be taken away. You see, each year, Grand wrote down the best and worst of the year. It became a tradition, one that saw us through times of plenty and times of want, marriages, births, deaths, new anticipations, times of uncertainty, <laughs> unemployment, promotions and celebrations, anything that brought us closer together as a family and ultimately closer to the Lord. Guys, we have to go. Early morning. Come on. Yeah, what's up? What's... Yeah, I'm scooting out to pick up a wreath in the morning, and Cynthia and the kids have to go pick up Lucas and his new latest girlfriend at the airport. Oh, what's this one called? Shasta. Shasta? Like the soda? get here until much later today, but hey, how'd you know I'd be here this early? Oh, it smells good in here. We just finished brewing. You want a cup? Of course. Like father, like daughter. Hey, here's the box mom used to write on. Wow. July 17th, went to the fair in Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, I still blame that trip on Lou's obsession with music and Nashville. We should have never gone to Tennessee that year. Or maybe we should have taken a different route to Knoxville that year. June 12th, Sarah finished school and enjoys the World Wide Web stuff, whatever it is. July 26th. Sarah's wedding day. We welcome John Duncan into our family forever. May 12th. We, Owen arrived a bit early, but John and Sarah love being parents, and of course we'll take all the grandchildren we can get. September 23rd. Little Melissa made enough noise coming to this world so that we wouldn't miss her. Dad, this is just not the life I had planned. It usually isn't. No, but Dad, why didn't it work? Why didn't he want it to work? What was so awful about me that he had to leave? I did meet someone out for coffee. Just so you could tell, tell Cynthia, Cynthia you were that dating. I've been dating, yes. Do you remember that year we tried to surprise your grandparents? The one where Lucas threw up all over the turkey? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. And nothing doing. And Cynthia had to have this ridiculous pink. Princess phone. Do you know how many stores and angry mothers I encountered that year? Dad, I'm appalled. You act as though I've never made a child's Christmas dreams come true. I'll have you know that I fought off my fair share of angry shoppers during the joyous Christmas season. <laughs> well, I think it would make all Cynthia's dreams come true if she thought there was even a possibility that you were dating again. <laughs> yeah, it, should, it would for sure. Hey, just bring in Jake. a wreath box. Hey, Jake, come on in. It's good to see you. Good to see you. So where's the rest of the crew? Oh, Cynthia and the kids are heading to the airport to pick up Lucas and his new girlfriend. Uh, what girlfriend? <laughs> uh, Shasta or something like that. Shasta? Like the soda? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so anyway, how are you doing? 
Well, you know, Cynthia, I'm just concerned about her. And Charlie and Ann, oh, they're just such good kids through all this. Jake, we're not asking about them, son. How are you? How are you doing? I, I'm a bit scared. I have no leads. I feel so inadequate. Cynthia is so tense and won't talk except for to say, the Lord will provide. There's no need in discussing anything. I just feel guilty because... Because? Well, guys, what if he doesn't? What if he doesn't? Jeez. I know, Pops. I know he will. But I just kind of feel forgotten right now where God is leading me. He knows what I'm needing. He knows how I'm feeling. Why must this continue? Cha, cha, cha. Do you think Kenny's an inhaler? Breathe, son. Breathe. Cha, cha. Out, out there. Cha, cha. Oh. Charlie. Oh. Cynthia. Cynthia. <laughs> oh. Hey, son. See ya. Hey, young lady. Hey, Hi, all. You must be Henry. Aren't you handsome? Lucas has told me all about you. But... You remind me of someone famous. Maybe someone in movies. People tell me I look like Liam Neeson all the time. No, no, that's not it. Give me a minute. It'll come to me. <clears throat> so tell me again why it was a good idea. Why you bringing this stray here? Knock it off. There's a good heart there. Where? Underneath all that makeup and hair extensions? Lay off, will you? She's a lot of fun. I've got it. Danny DeVito. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? A short little... Yeah. Yep, yep, there it is, Dad. Way to go. Why can't everyone in this family just be normal for a day? Is that too much to ask? A little normalcy for Christmas? <sighs> Don't you have enough to worry about these days? No, because the Lord is taking care of it. I know you keep saying that, but it seems like you're saying it just to convince yourself. Uh, what's that supposed to mean? I mean, so what if Shasta and I don't work out? I enjoy spending time with her, and I think it's important that everyone spend time with others at Christmas. So, worst case is, we spend Christmas together. And best case? 
is that Anne will always remember the Christmas that her Aunt Shasta took her to get her first tattoo. Ah. No, no, really, I think you'd be surprised at how grounded she is. Uh, I think you should just focus your attention elsewhere. Uh, well, we're going to the soup kitchen, so why don't I just focus my attention there? That's not exactly what I meant. Hey, everyone, we have carolers. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Looks like they've brought the entire church. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome. Thank you. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Hey, thank you for coming. Good to see you. Merry Christmas. Oh, the Keegans. I've been expecting you. And the Daltons. Hey. Oh, of course the Daltons. Oh, thank you. Pastor. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Good you to see you. You know he's single. Merry right? Christmas. Stop. Thank you so much for coming. And who is this? Shasta. Shasta? Like, like the soda. soda. You know what? That's close enough. You can even call me Soda Pop if you like. I don't mind. You certainly are bubbly enough, aren't you? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Here we go again. Uh, how'd you end up here? Uh, Miss, um... Shasta. I mean, you really don't have to ask. Like the soda? <laughs> well, I don't mind, Pastor. Actually, I'd like to tell you a story, uh, Miss Soda Pop. Uh, I've got a daughter around your age and two grandchildren. But uh, they don't know that I'm here. Do you talk to them? Well, quite often I call them. Uh, they don't live locally, but uh, they think I travel for my job. Do you have a job? Actually, I do. I just don't make enough money to pay for the rent, the food, stuff like that. But, uh, but uh, this guy right here, he's a blessing. He's been helping me to get back on my feet and... Um, Slowly but surely. Surely, surely. What's your name, sir? Well, uh, sir, no one's called me sir in a while. <laughs> but, um, you know, they call me the count on the street because I actually count all my possessions and the money that I have. Um, I watch it like a hawk. Then why don't they call you the hawk? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, gang, before we eat, I would like to read from the Second chapter of Luke. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Let us pray. Lord, give me patience, like you say in your Hebrews chapter. Oh, right, you already know what you say in your Hebrews chapter. Lucas and that soft drink woman, why? Why did he bring her? I just don't know what to do. I've prayed, I've been faithful, why? I don't mean to complain, but once this severance check runs out, and he's so sensitive right now, if I say anything... But I have to say something, don't I? I just feel so inadequate, Lord. It's Christmas, and I want to provide for my family. What's wrong with a man wanting that? I'm grateful Cynthia's pitching in, but if something doesn't happen soon, we may be the ones being fed here next year. I feel awful, Lord. They agreed to let me get braces, but then Dad lost his job. They said they'd keep their promise, but it's just too much for them right now. I'm okay with waiting, but Lord, please, if they insist, please make it so it's not so much of a strain. What's that funny smell? It stinks. I miss Gwen. I know he misses her, too. Boy, if Gwen is here, I bet she will learn about Sasha on the box this year. Lord, thank you for making things better between John and I. I miss you. I miss our life. Two years later, and it feels like I've only taken half a step. What am I missing, Lord? What is it you're trying to tell me? Lord, I just don't know. I really like her. I don't want to lose her, but she just has this, this light about her. Why would she want to marry me, though? Who wants a coffee house wannabe for a husband? Thank you for giving me a family this Christmas, Lord, even if it's someone else's. I sense a brokenness among them. Losing Mrs. Keegan must have brought their problems more to the surface. Thank you for letting them cross my path. 
especially because Lucas is so great, so talented. Let me learn what I need to learn here this Christmas season. Thank you, Lord. Father, I know you always hear us when we pray. So we ask these things in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Um, this, is, this is what we did. And, and she's not here when everything is so nothing is. How do I do this, Lord, without her? Who's going to take care of me? Of us? Who's going to take care of Dad? Who's going to place the angel on top of the tree now? Where are you, Jesus? I'm hurting. I'm in pain. Who's going to take care of Christmas? Mom, what is it? Oh, (laughs) nothing, honey. I'm just having a moment. (laughs) It's weird without her here. I love Christmas, but so much of what we did was orchestrated by Gran. It's like we're having to figure it all out now, how things will get done. Need some help? Oh, we got it. (laughs) Oh, but I'd love to. Oh, we got it. We got it. You just go back in there. But (laughs) Cynthia, we've hardly got... Anne, start breaking the chocolate for the s'mores. You know, it's better to melt the chocolate just a bit on the marshmallow instead. I said we got it. (laughs) (laughs) But Cynthia, it's better... The chocolate just really doesn't melt with just the marshmallow, so I thought that... Well, you thought wrong. Because our chocolate melts just fine. Uh, Cynthia, (laughs) just let me show you how to melt. Shasta, you will not be melting our chocolate. Just let me show you how to melt. No melt. (laughs) Just a little melt. No melt. How about some ice cream instead, just to shake things up a bit this year? Stay Stay out of it. it. (laughs) Everything all right? Everything okay in there? We're fine. You know, I can relate to a bit of what you're feeling. I lost my own mother in a car when I was six and landed in a foster home when I was ten. My foster parents were so great, they took me to church and taught me about Christ. And you never saw any of your own family after that? Well, my mom's brother would stop by on occasion, but that's really as much as he could handle. Well, where are your family now, or or do you keep up with your foster parents? Everyone's gone. My foster mother passed away about four years ago. So you have no memories or traditions? Sure I do. Granted, not all of them pleasant. My uncle always had some sort of present for me, and he'd call her right sometimes. I remember my foster parents were so great, and I remember my mother vividly. In fact, I have an old school notebook of hers where I keep my annual wrap-up. Huh? I did spend many years wondering and doubting. Where was God? Surely he had forgotten all about me. Where was he when everything was falling apart and changing? But then I remembered, he's right there with us. He's not going anywhere. Well, uh, okay, so back to this annual wrap-up of yours. Oh, yeah, so the notebook. It was my mother's. She passed away in grad school. So each year, I'd take a page, front and back, and write down about the experience, or what God would have me praise him for the situation. Because even though my life has been complete chaos at times, my salvation through Jesus is eternal. Wow. Interesting. You know, my mother did something very similar. Really? Yeah. (laughs) I'll show you the top of the tree. I haven't seen this in years. Wow. Oh, what is it, Dad? Uh, um, uh, it's a letter from your mother that, that first Christmas. Uh, the Christmas we got this ugly, beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's it say, Dad? Oh, wow. Oh, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, dear Hank. Who's Hank? Hello, it's Pops. Who do you think, silly? I'm just asking. Shh. Dear Dear Hank, Hank. I know I've not been myself lately. There have been so many changes all at once this year, with a new country and new marriage, that I guess I've forgotten it's your life too. Our simple Christmas this year has put into focus that it's so much more than trees and gifts. My prayer is that I, I mean we, We'll embrace our family, savor the memories we will make, and welcome the many adjustments that we will have to make on our journey. And I know that we can handle those changes because we trust in a Savior who's unchanging. I'm praying that our children and grandchildren, that we will hopefully someday have, will learn to trust and follow Jesus with all of their heart, even 
when we're not around anymore. Our Jesus is a wonderful counselor, a mighty God. He's Emmanuel, our God with us, and we are celebrating his birth. That should be our legacy. So I've decided that our first tradition will be jotting down our family milestones on this box each Christmas as a reminder that we made it through another year. I love you, Hank, and I'm so grateful that God put us on this life journey together. Each Christmas will present us with a victory and perhaps a different challenge. But let's cherish the unique path that the Lord has set before us. We are truly blessed beyond measure. And you got to admit, Hank, he keeps it interesting. Oh, Lucas, now I'm Mr. and I didn't even know her. Now I understand why you wrote that song. What, what song? What song? Oh, I can't believe they don't know. It's all about traditions and change. It's going to be his big break. <laughs> well, why don't you sing it for us, Lucas? Yes. December hasn't changed This town looks the same They still light that tree in the city square There's red, white, and green shining everywhere And I wish you were here and I wonder Is the snow falling down on the streets of gold? Are the mansions all covered in white? Are you singing with angels silent night? I wonder what Christmas in heaven is like There's a little manger scene On Forest City, Maine I must walk right by it a thousand times But I see it now in a different light Cause I know you are there And I wonder Are you kneeling with shepherds before him now? Can you reach out and touch his face? Are you part of that glorious holy night? I wonder what Christmas in heaven is like. all covered in white Are you singing with angels silent night I wonder what Christmas in heaven is like
Bye. I told y'all he was good. <laughs> Who's going to top the tree this year? <laughs> I'm choosing to embrace my favorite opportunity that was thrown at me this Christmas. Oh, Cynthia, thank you! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think this means you made the box this year. And part, you're right. That old ugly angel is really beautiful. Yes, it is, buddy. <laughs> this calls for a group hug. Am I getting here? <laughs> okay. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's give them another hand. Good job, guys. Thank you so much. You know, I was talking with Kelsey and Rhonda over the last few days, and one of the things that I noticed is that this drama ministers to so many different situations, and Maybe this morning you find yourself in one of those situations. Maybe you've, this Christmas season, you've, you've had a loss in your family, a loved one. You've lost somebody close to you and first Christmas through that. Or maybe financial difficulties through unemployment or uncertainties. Maybe this Christmas you're in a situation, a divorce, or life's just not the same as what it was last year. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is enough for you. Amen. Amen. Through whatever situation that Jesus Christ is enough. And, you know, I was just sitting there thinking is you can't really celebrate Christmas without first knowing the Christ. Yes. Amen. You can go through the motions. You can do the traditions. You can see the lights and put up the tree. But to know the true meaning of Christmas, you must first know the Christ. Amen. And just as the second chapter of Luke tells us that there was no room for him in the end, I would ask you, is there room in your life for Christ this Christmas? 
Because it's not Christmas without Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you close your eyes all over this place? I just want to. I'd like to ask you as we've did the last few nights, maybe you find yourself in one of these situations and you'd say, man, I really need Jesus to move in an area of my life. Or maybe I don't know Christ at all, but this Christmas I would like to open that gift that God sent His only Son into this world that I could have life and life abundantly. If that's you this morning, would you just slip your hand up and slip it right back down and you have a need in your life? Amen. I see those hands. Thank you. Thank you. See those hands. I'm not going to call you out. not going to do anything funny. not going to call you up front. Just slip your hand up and right back down. Thank you. I want to pray over you this, this morning. Father, I'm so grateful and so thankful out of everything that we could receive in this life, let us know that receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is the most important thing. And we're so grateful that you sent your Son to be Emmanuel, God with us, that He is the most precious gift ever given. We've heard it said that wise men still seek Him as they were following that star and they were looking for the Savior. I would say that even over 2,000 years later, wise men, wise women, they still seek Jesus. Father, I pray, God, over everyone in this place and everyone watching. Lord, I know there's needs, there's hurts, there's loss, there's uncertainties, there's sickness, there's sorrow, all these things. But you gave us the answer to all those all of life situations, everything that we would face in this life, you gave us the answer, and that is Jesus. Because even though we walk through this life and we walk through uncertainty, we walk through loss and sorrow, we're not alone because you sent your son Jesus to be Emmanuel, God with us, that we won't have to walk through life situations alone. But Jesus is going with us. He said, even to the ends of this life. And I'm so grateful for that. God, we honor you, we praise you, and we thank you for the precious gift that is found in your Son, Jesus. Oh God, you're so good to us. What a precious gift. And that gift has been given to all the world. But I would say there's some that's not even open a gift. It's still just sitting there as a present under a tree. But Lord, I would say if there's some watching or in this place that's not received that precious gift that is Jesus. Let them open it this season. Let it be real to them. Let them know the Christ. Because it's in Him that we live and we move and we have our being. It's Him that we can celebrate Christmas. It's Him that we can know You and have a relationship with You. It's through Your Son, Jesus. So we love You, God. We thank You. God, that through this season we celebrate the gift of life is Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Monty. Could you give God a praise today? Can you lift up that name of Jesus? Thank you, Father. The name that is above every name, and I bless him. And would you one more time tell this group, thank you for those and uh, the cast, those that served and the sound and Tucker did another fine job this morning, and uh, everything was great, so thank you so much. I want to tell you about a couple of things, and then we'll receive the offering, and uh, then Paul will come around and close out, but I do want to remind the staff and council about tomorrow evening, uh, the uh, time together at uh, Paul and Katie's home, so if you haven't responded to that, what time is it, Katie? You don't know either, do you? We're going to be there. It? Six o'clock. All right. At yeah, six o'clock tomorrow evening for the staffing council. Senior, what time this afternoon? Two. All right. You're right on it. So thank you so much. We're going to have a great, great time. Also, the voucher is very important. If you know somebody we can bless with food, pick up a voucher. See Paul as you go out the door this morning. 
And finally, remember, uh, again, next Sunday morning, the 18th, we're going to have a, another program. Uh, it's going to be different, this one, and then our Christmas Eve service at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve. Monty? We will know tomorrow. Yeah, I, I'll put that out tomorrow about uh, what food we still need that um, we can still get. Plus, if you want to give uh, money that we can buy food with, and you, you can also see Paul, Paul as you go out about that. So, Sanji and Anita have been to our church three, four years now, and and I just, uh, I may have said this to the congregation, I know I've said it to individuals, God builds connections with people I think for a reason and I think there's a reason that Sanjeev and Anita who serve in India and minister to the people and to the children there there's a reason that God brought us that connection I'm thankful to tell you that our council has put them in the budget this year and that we're going to be supporting them monthly um out of our budget, but we wanted to be a blessing to them and to the children there that they serve in India. And the only way that we can really do that is to receive uh, an offering and get that directly to Sanjeev and Anita so that they can buy gifts for those children and uh, just make the areas there that are impoverished just a little brighter. So as we celebrate I, I I don't even know the way that we, we celebrate that we just get so much anymore. And we're so blessed that we can take just a little gift. And I challenge you to think a little bigger than what you're thinking right now. And bring and bless Sanjeev and Anita. So, Father, thank you for that. And I bless them, Lord, in this season. Lord, I bless Sanjeev and Anita. I bless all our missionaries, Lord, that we support around the world and even all those that are apart just spreading the gospel. Lord, would you bless them? Would you, God, we can do a little bit for the one area, but would you put it on the hearts of others, that other churches, for those you've connected them with, that, Lord, that they can be a blessing and together that we can show the love of Jesus to a lost and to a dying world. And I pray as this people give, Father, that you will make their Christmas just a little brighter because of that. Can I say here an amen? Amen. amen. Would you stand together and uh, bring that offering to the Lord and go back to your seat for just a moment and Paul's going to come around and close this out. I love you this morning. Thank you, guys. Paul says, uh, for me to go ahead and tell you bye this morning. So uh, uh, would you tell Monty and Paul, they are such a blessing to me, all of you. And I tell you, I appreciate all those that, that God has brought along our side, George and Angel. And just uh, I, I'm grateful for those that God partner with, Miss Julie. And uh, thank you so much. We bless you. We bless the rest of your day, and seniors, I'll see you at 2. And again, if you haven't signed up, if you want to go on the senior trip, see me before you leave today. I bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you.